I hate to speak with people behind my back. <laughs> Good morning. It is wonderful to be here with you this morning in this beautiful village of Warwick. Uh, as we were driving up through 17, Route 17, up the mountain and down the mountain, my wife Clara kept saying, well, where on earth are we going? <laughs> this is different. <laughs> yeah, it's just different from Manhattan, all right. <laughs> but it's beautiful. Uh, we're def we're one really delighted to be here with you. They say, they say wherever bishop goes, he brings the entire diocese with him. And I bring greetings from the rest of the diocese, other 198 congregations all over the place, from Staten Island all the way up to Tivoli and Saugerties, from, from um, the Connecticut border all the way out to Pennsylvania border. It's a huge geographic area to cover. But you are right in the middle, it's actually pretty much the center, I think, almost, uh, just looking at the, um, the area, the ge geography of the diocese, um, tucked away in the, in the bottom of the, of the, of the mountains, and uh, um, a little gem to discover, uh, in fact. So, great to be here with you. Um, Matthew, two, Matthew 25 is an important chapter in the book of Matthew. Math, Jesus in, this, in, in Matthew has been, ever since, has been preaching about the kingdom of God ever since he entered Jerusalem. And you know where he's heading. Chapter 26 begins the Passion story. This is the last, the, the parable we just heard is actually the very last teaching about the kingdom of God that he's been imparting to his disciples all along. It sums it up, if you will. You heard last Sunday about the parable of the talents, parable of the wise and, and, and foolish um, bridesmaids before, and etc. The parable of the mustard seeds and, and all that. All points to today's gospel story. It is all about Jesus who is, about, who is about to become the king of God's kingdom. But it's a different king. King who is, who is to be crucified. King who has come to lay down his life so that we may have life. King who was willing to hand himself over to God's grace completely and perfectly that he too may be reconciled and be completely embraced in God's loving presence and his kingdom. But it is not just about Jesus way up there who is so remote. Jesus came to show us how to be human. He came and lived the life of human life so that how we can live together. Kingdom of God is something that he came to show us that it is possible here and now. That's the whole point of this gospel story we just heard. Some years ago, actually about 18 years ago, I guess, um, I used to work in Times Square at a parish church called St. Mary the Virgin, in the middle, right in the middle of Times Square. And and who would have thought that they would have a, you would have a church in the middle of Times Square? But it was an interesting place to be. It was an interesting place to minister. Simply because of the kinds of people that I, I served and came into contact with. Yes, I came into contact with many visitors and tourists who, more often than not, were nuisance than, than, than 
um, you know, than, than, than people who were, who were, who were um, pleasant to serve, actually. They, made, they, they would walk into church or pass by and, and, and just kind of get really noisy all the time. And Times Square, as you, you know, you've been, you've been there, it's, it's impossible to even walk through sometimes. But then there were also many um, homeless people in the midst of all the tourists and, and um, people who were shopping and who were just working in the business district. And this one, one day, and we lived right there too, um, and it was an odd place to live, and great for, for transportation, but not good for, for grocery shopping, actually. <laughs> Um, and this one day, it was one summer, well, hot summer, summer evening. Um, my wife and I were about to enter our apartment, which was on the fourth floor of this parish house, parish building. And there was a, a woman sitting, crouched down, right in front of our door. And at first I thought, well, maybe I should just kind of wander, walk around a couple more times around the block so that she... She may leave, and then we can go in. And as we came closer, uh, I, the smell from, from that woman was just unbelievable. And that made it even more comfortable. I said, oh my gosh, what is this person doing in front of, this, in front of our apartment doorway? You know, well, we quickly and quietly sort of walked around her, and we were able to get into the door and go upstairs. Well, about a week later, in the, while we were in the middle of morning prayer, the same lady showed up. And this time, she was cleaned up, so she must have found a place where they provided shower and, and clothing. She had new clothing. She had white patent leather shoes, I remember. And a, and a little, little um, luggage, small luggage that she, with a roller, roller luggage that she had and um, some of her stuff in it, I'm sure. And she would sit in the back and just not say a word, just kind of sit there through the morning prayer. And that went on. She showed up the next day. She showed up the following day for a couple of weeks. She was there every day for the morning prayer. Finally, I mustered up enough courage to go up and say, Hi, how are you? And welcomed her. And I extended my hand to shake her hand. She said, No, just want to... She didn't want to shake my hands, but she said, I just came to pray because I love this church. It, reminded me of, it reminds me of home. And she, she had clear an accent. So I said, well, where are you from? He said, I'm from Ethiopia. I said, wow, Ethiopia. How did you end up here in, in the middle of Times Square? He said, well, it's a long story. It's a long story. And we, st we started a little bit of conversation. She came back again the following week, every day for morning prayer. And then finally I, I stuck, got enough courage to again to sort of strike a conversation with her. And I finally had the courage to say, well, what is your, what is your name? She said, my name is Kiddush. I said, that's a beautiful name. What does that mean? And she looked at me quietly for a moment. Do you really want to know? I said, yes, I do. It's a beautiful name. It means holy. My grandfather gave me that name. I was speechless. I was dumbstruck. My first thought was Matthew 25. The story we just heard. I was in the presence of Jesus and I didn't know. And then I remember a baptismal covenant. 
how I was called to see, seek and serve Christ in all persons. See, you never know when and where you will encounter Christ. You may be encountering Christ every day, every moment of your life, and you just don't know. I learned a lesson. I learned a lesson of what it means to seek and serve Christ in every person. Jesus came down, became in, the Word of God, become incarnate, so that we can, we can have a relationship with Christ in each other. The kingdom of God is not a pie in the sky. Kingdom of God comes to us through community, because we are constantly in a relationship with God and with Jesus through one another. That is what Christ, that is what Jesus is saying today. When did I visit you in the prison? When did I give you food, a drink of water? When you do to what, that to one another, you do it to me. If you cannot explain and understand the theology of the Incarnation, this is it. Just tell that story. That is the Incarnation. It is because of that that we, it is possible for us to be empathetic to each other, to, be, to show empathy toward each other because Jesus Christ showed us the way. They say technically and philosophically empathy is humanly impossible to enter into somebody else's emotions and feelings, somebody else's, what somebody else is truly going through, empathy. Only God can do that. Yes, only God can do that. But God in Christ, God in Jesus, was able to do that so that we, through him, can also do the same. What we celebrate today, the Feast of Christ the King, is we are celebrating the King who was crucified and laid down his life for our salvation, for the salvation of the world, to show us how we can live together in common humanity. The kingdom of God calls us to that common destiny that we all share. So we have work to do as Christians. The work that's been given to us is to seek and serve Christ in other people. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you don't always remember. But that is our baptismal covenant. That is our mission. I understand you are in the midst of big stewardship drive at the moment. But it begins, that whole understanding of stewardship, my friends, begins with mission. What is your mission? Jesus showed the way. He is the way. What is your mission in that way? We are all have a mission. Come on in. It's okay. Don't go away. <laughs> Oh. That's this important question that you all must ask yourself. 
as you give your commitment and your pledge to the work of this community, it begins with your personal mission. And what is Jesus calling you to do as a steward of his gift, the kingdom of God? Amen.